you get in these meetings and you know you're going to preach with another preacher and you don't want to mess up, amen? And sometimes the Lord will put two messages along the same line and sometimes he'll have two complete opposite messages. And, um, and so I was really praying and, and, um, and so in Psalm 139... If you look in verse number one, David said, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Father, I ask for your help tonight. Uh, Lord, I, I, I'm not going to even try to attempt to uh, improve, but I just want to follow you. And so, God, you know all about it, and we pray that you'd work it all out. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we were talking, you know, Brother Foltz mentioned about revival, and, and uh, you know, we call these revival meetings, refresher meetings, and things like that. And, and really, it's... Uh, uh, we, we're praying it is a revival meeting. Amen. And be honest, we may not know for a while whether it is a revival meeting or not. And, uh, but it says there, uh, uh, let, let me sum up Psalm 139, 1 and 2. God knows everything about us. Amen. Ain't that saved or lost, he knows everything about us. There ain't nothing we could say that's going to surprise him. There ain't nothing we could think, nothing we could do, uh, no place we could go uh, that is uh, going to take him by surprise. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he's never been to a surprise party, amen? Has it ever occurred to you that nothing's ever occurred to him? He's never used this phrase, oh yeah, amen? But he, he, has, he searched us, it says. He's known us. He, he, knows, uh, he knows when we sit down. He knows when we get up. And uh, he said, thou understandest my thought afar off. And then he says, thou uh, compassest my path and my lying down. Uh, that word uh, uh, compasses means to surround us. There's no place that you and I could go that we're going to escape him. We're not going to escape his knowledge. We're not going to escape his, uh, his sight of us. He's not gonna, uh, uh, we're not going to escape his awareness of us. He's in my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. Now, I don't know about you, but that's convicting. Because let me just tell you, we... Uh, we look over both shoulders. Amen. There's no moon out. It's complete. All the shades are drawn. And he sees it just like it was high noon. And, you know, isn't it amazing? This is how stupid we are. This is how stupid we are. We hope so-and-so never finds out what we did. We hope the preacher doesn't find out. We hope the wife, the husband, the, uh, we hope brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, we hope they don't find out what we did, and yet we, we, we forget almost, in the, or at least put in the back of our mind, that, that while we're hoping, you know, they didn't see it, it was wide open for God. Well, I don't want nobody to know what I did, so I won't put this one on Facebook. Well, go ahead. But God still saw it, amen? And, and it says uh, he's acquainted with all of it. He's very, very familiar, amen, and aware of all that we do. And uh, verse 4 says, For there is not a word in my tongue. But lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. That's convicting. That's depressing. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and he says so much there. It says, uh, verse 5, thou hast, 
Thou hast beset me behind and before and laid thine hand upon me. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Now, when he's saying wonderful, he's not thinking, woohoo. All right? It, it, it means it's overwhelming. Such knowledge is it's, it's overwhelming. I, I, I mean, the fact that, uh, 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 that we can not hide anything from God. Me and my wife were having a, uh, I was preaching meeting in New York several years ago, and, and, uh, and one night her and I went out and uh, went to grab a bite to eat after the service, and, and we're sitting there, and, and, uh, and it just was one of those, uh, uh, I'm trying to think that we're probably going back maybe four or five years ago. All right, so, so been married 20 years. And somehow we just started talking, going back and forth. And, and Brother Fultz, I learned something. I, I learned things about my wife that night I, I never knew before. She told me some things I never knew. I told her some things about me that she never knew. But I didn't tell her everything. It wasn't a blank check. There's some things, amen, Brother Tony, I'm taking to the grave, amen, that I don't want her to ever find out. But God knows all about them. Amen. God still knows. Amen. And, uh, and, uh, and it's a pretty amazing thing. And it says, uh, verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain. A... How are you going to figure out, amen, that God knows all about us? You know, uh, what, what's that song we teach to the kids? Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Amen. For the Father up above is looking down in love. Amen. Look, let, let's just face it. When it comes to our flesh and our sin, if we're bent on doing something, we don't give a rip whether God's watching or not. We know he is. But that knowledge ought to hinder us a little bit. It ought to cause us to at least take a second thought about whether we should do it or not, which we know we shouldn't. Um. And then verse 7 says, Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? Where are you going to go to get out of the eyesight and knowledge of God? You could go to the remotest island. We, uh, I, I went to Germany uh, la last year, and when we, were, when, we, when we flew over, it was at nighttime, couldn't see nothing. When we flew back, we, however they do that, they, they kind of arc a little bit in, the, in their flight path, and we went, over, uh, we went over Greenland. And I looked down there, and, and, and uh, 40,000 feet, however, however many feet below, and I'm talking, there was nothing. It was ice and snow and mountains and lakes and and i mean i mean there was no you didn't see cars you didn't see cities you didn't see buildings you didn't see anything and you could take off there however you would get there and and god is still right there you're not going to escape him you're not going to escape him uh he says uh Verse 8, if I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. It ain't no difference to God, whether it was light or dark. Amen. He don't need night vision goggles. Amen. He just looks. And in his all in his in his all knowing, uh, his in his uh, omnipresence, amen, he sees it, uh, he, he sees it all. Um And then you look down at verse 13, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. You, you can't even go back to before birth 
and escape him. But he's already there. Verse 14, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. We know in our heart and our soul the goodness of God and and how complex all this is. We, We went down to the Henry Ford Museum today. Never been there. Always wanted to go there. I heard about that thing 20 plus years ago when a foreman at a shop I worked at went there and told me about it. And uh, you look at all the things that God has allowed man to invent. And all that knowledge comes from God. I I mean, it's just just an amazing thing. Verse 15, my substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which uh, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. We, We already were in existence in the mind of God and in the knowledge of God. And then verse 17 How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. God thinks about us. Can I go back to verse 6? Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. You know, we're coming up on Christmas and people give gifts. And, And, you know, can I just tell you... There's the occasional exception. But no matter what a gift is, people put, they didn't have to give it. Amen? I I remember one time getting a, I I got a Mickey Mouse tie from my sister for Christmas. Now, if she know anything about me, she know I ain't never going to wear a Mickey Mouse tie. I don't know whatever ended up happening to that thing. I know that I never wore it. And even though I looked at it when I opened it and I just went, you know, I had to at least appreciate the fact that it took time and effort. And and there was thought, she thought, but God thinks about us. And he says, how precious are his thoughts of us. Even though we all spent all these verses talking about how he sees everything, the good and the bad, and yet his thoughts are precious to uh, of us. And, and, and I like this verse 18. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. I heard a preacher preach this verse years ago, and, and, he, and he had some sand with him. And he had a big old bucket, and he said, he said, he said, if if the average man just went go just went like this in that bucket and and looked and and and, and he said there'd be probably a, about ten thousand grains of sand in in the hand. And just think of each one of those tiny little grains representing one time that he thought about us. And it, and he had. He had a five-gallon bucket. And he said, based on mathematics and space and equations and all that, he says, he says there's anywhere, uh, you've got real fine sand, you've got real coarse sand, and then you've got medium-grain sand. He said, if it was just medium-grain sand, and I'm just giving you the figures he gave us, I, I sure ain't proved them. But he said, in, in a, in, not pack tight, just, just scoop up dry Medium grain sand in a five-gallon bucket, he says, there's between three and four million grains of sand. And you think about every one of those three to four million grains of sand representing one time that God has thought about us. And then he said this, now let's go down to the beach. 
Hey, listen, I, I like that song, He Knows My Name, amen. I, I, I'm not a stranger to Him, amen. I don't have to wear a Hello My Name Is sticker when I go to the throne room of God, amen. He knows exactly, He's familiar with me. And then, I, I tried to get all that to, to get down to verse number 23 and kind of what Brother Foles was preaching tonight, search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. He talks about the words earlier in the chapter, but our thoughts aren't even hid to him. I do not know what you're thinking, but I know what you're doing. I, I mean, I could tell you you're sitting down. I could tell you you're standing up. I could tell you you're walking out the door. I could tell you you're driving down the road. I, 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 based on what I see, I, I don't know what you're thinking. God knows what we think. And uh, when you, and then verse 24. Now, I, I don't know how your mind works, but I, there's some, this is one of those funny verses in the Bible to me. You say, what are you talking about funny? Verse, verse 24, and see if there be any wicked way in me. It's like, if any of you lack wisdom. You know, it's like God giving us the benefit of the doubt, amen? And, and David was giving himself the benefit of the doubt here. But, but see if there be any wicked way in me and, and lead me in the way uh, everlasting. And, and I got to thinking about it. David is giving God an invitation. And the invitation that he's given him is an invitation to check him out. He's saying, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on that little glass plate on the microscope and I, I want you to look through it. And you know what that is? It's a, it's, a, it's a very open invitation. It's a very open invitation. It's a very scary invitation. Here's another thing it is. It's a very revealing invitation. You say, well, Brother Craig, I, I, there's times and, you know, when, when I get on that thing of repentance and I go to God and, I, and I, I, can, I confess every sin that I know about. Well, what about the ones we don't know? We're so far removed. We've got the book, okay? But there's thought processes and, and there's ways we justify things that, that, that we're so far removed from... from uh, 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 what we even think is sin. Why would we confess it if we didn't think it was sin? But, but God ha, may have addressed it, or there's principles in the Word of God that, that uh, should tell us that, you know, cheer up, you're worse than you think. Amen? We don't even know all of our wicked ways. Amen? Uh, here, here's another thing. Not only is it an open or a scary or a revealing invitation, but it's a very honest invitation. And have you ever stopped to think about this? I remember the Lord giving me this thought, not this message, but this little thought when I was preaching for Brother Tony back in January. God is not worried about offending us. I mean... I didn't realize we couldn't sing Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer anymore because it's a song about bullying. That's what they said this week. I heard a, read a news article about it. And, and you know, it's, it's leaving people out. It's promoting, you know, uh, exclusive clubs or something, I guess. We live in a society today where you can't offend anybody. You're not allowed to offend anybody. And God is not worried about offending us. When you ask God to show him or show yourself how he sees you, 
He's not going to offend you. And number two, he's not going to lie to you. Everything that God reveals to you about yourself, you can mark it down. It's 100% true. I remember my pastor in Indiana, we had a conversation. He, we were talking in his office one day, and this was about three or four years ago, three years ago it was, and, and Brother Foltz, he just felt for some reason he needed to have a heart-to-heart with me about me. I would have much rather went out and dug a ditch, amen, paved the parking lot one-handed, and he wanted to share a couple of things that he thought I needed to hear. And you know what I, it's like what you were saying about thinking about needing to be corrected. I appreciated his time, but I sat there and I said, and, and I wasn't trying to be a jerk or anything. I mean, there, I mean, I know issues I got, but there was a couple of things that he brought up and I said, I just don't see it. And I wasn't, I really didn't. And I, I, I had to ask the Lord. I said, Lord, I, what he's saying is pretty serious, and I don't want, I don't want to be that way. So you're going to have to show it to me. That didn't take too long. He did. He made confirmation that the preacher was right. Amen. And uh, we don't, I'm just going to tell you, I, my flesh don't like that. My flesh doesn't like that. And uh, the question is, and, and, and we're not going to repent until we are willing to listen and agree with God about us. And, and, and the preacher said at the end, let that, let that thought about repentance be on our mind all week long. And, and, I, and I have that written in my notes this week. Let this be our thought all week long. God, just show me me. Show, show me me. And uh, accept what he shows us. And then repent from that. We, we, there's, a, there's a push. And people... There's been a push for a long time, but, I, but it, it seems like everything goes in circles. But that word repentance today in our Baptist churches is frowned upon, looked down upon. You don't need to repent after you get saved. You don't need to confess after you get saved. Well, I want that fellowship to God, with God to remain clear. I'm not, con- I'm not confessing and repenting for salvation. I took care of that 30 plus years ago. I, I want, I'm confessing and repenting for that fellowship and that growth and, and for God to help me and use me and, and, and do something. Amen? Hey, it's not a long thought this morning. I just want to put my exclamation point on it. Uh, we, we're not going to be like him until we see him. And until then, it's a battle day by day, day by day. Father, I ask, Lord, in, in uh, my feeble little attempt, God, to try to get this thought across, but, Lord, you, you've been working on my heart about it, and, and Lord, even... Lord, on on the airplane over here on Saturday, just heavy conviction about a couple of things and and things you pointed out to me about me. And so, Lord, uh, may we may we be concerned with what you think about us, and then may we may we act and get, act upon it and and repent and get right in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay in your seats and uh, maybe bow your head in reverence and keep your eyes closed and ask God to search you. I know it sounds sort of mechanical, and uh, 
I'm just trying to do what the Lord wants me to do, and, and that is to get the benefit out of both these messages. If you don't see who you are, you're usually defending yourself against everybody. Because you think other people maybe don't see you how you think you are. Jesus Christ never, never promoted reputation. What you are is what you are. And God knows what you are. And admitting what you are before God is the greatest thing you can do. But he's got to show you what it is that you need to agree with him on. And that is why we take time to reflect and to wait for the Holy Spirit to bring something up. There may be, even be a bitterness against people in our church. Someone may regard something in their heart. God will show you that. You may have a hallway with a bunch of doors, and a couple of them doors you ain't letting God go in. Problem is, he's already in there. You say, oh, preacher, what can I do? Be honest with God. You don't have to broadcast it with all of us. Just You be honest with God. He'll show you what you got. He'll show you what you need to do. Victory comes from him. You want victory, it comes from God. Because God has to get the glory. You were saved supernaturally. You were sealed supernaturally. You have God's supernatural book. He deals with you supernaturally. Therefore, don't think of him as some kind of a human being, sin-ridden. He's God. And we're his kids. And he wants the best for us. And he can't give us the best a lot of times because we just ain't fessing up. So this week, our church, Victory Baptist, just search yourself. We want to be closer to God when this meeting's over with. We want to keep things short. We want to be a witness. And believe it or not, our ultimate goal is to be a Christian 24-7. Just be a, just an ordinary Christian 24-7 not ashamed not cold but a witness of what God's done for us Amen. I think it's I think it's starting off good. Uh, we got blessed with like a sh sugary honey thing Sunday. Man, that was really good. I should have known something like this would happen. <laughs> Amen. Man, we're so glad you guys came and uh, was here with us tonight. And you know, anytime you come, we're all together. You never know; it might be the time we're getting out of here. You know, I may be talking just like I'm talking right now, and Lord have mercy, it ain't going to be no LSD trip. It's going to be the real thing, man. Yeah. Poof. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. But while we're stuck in the flesh, amen, we need the war like the post of war. And uh, our weapons are not carnal, they're spiritual. So, amen. 
Brother Edmonds, uh, close us in a word of prayer and send us on our way. Amen.